Sneakers.
What's up everybody, from Tech Donuts here, as you can see today I'm an elf, so, and I've got really crooked ears and I'm really sensitive about them, so uh, don't say anything. Oh. So today we're going to take this guy, and uh... Basically, it throttles really bad um, once it reaches 100C, which is the uh, max junction for a Core 2 Duo, which is what's in this. And um, so somebody gave this to me and they wanted to see if I could get it to not thermal throttle. So we're going to go through a gamut of techniques and kind of record the temperatures we get, both uh, ambient and under, uh, and under load. And I'll put them right over here in the... there. Right over here, what I get based on what I do. First thing I'm going to do is uh, open it up, blow it out with the uh, industrial blower dealy, and um, then I'll sort of just stick it back together. I won't necessarily put all the screws back in it, but then we'll run it again real quick. Then we'll reapply thermal paste using a really nice thermal paste. Then we'll run the test again. And then we're going to apply thermal shims, 20 mil by 20 mil. Um, I'll probably use thermal adhesive for that. And then we'll run the test again. And hopefully, eh, hopefully it uh, actually helps at least a little bit because this thing runs really hot for a little portable guy. Oh, I broke it. It's actually got a really cool hinge on it. This is a Fujitsu, uh, Fujitsu life book. And it's pretty rad. Um, it's got 8 gigs of RAM, it's got an old Core 2 Duo on it. Anyway, so I guess I gotta start by taking this thing apart. So we're gonna shut it down. Let's see, check all the angles and stuff, make sure everything looks good. Do -do -do. I've got my laptop over here so I can. I need a crown. I don't really have like a TRI or anything. These elf ears are actually really slick. I got them. They're kind of pricey ones. Um, they actually match up with earlobes pretty well with spirit gum on them and a little bit of uh, like latex. You really can't tell it's a fake ear, but obviously since I don't have any of that on, it's a little bit, a little bit obvious, and they'll probably fall off at some point. Okay, so before we do that. Get, get it. Shut off. Shut off. Okay, good. Unplug it. It's so hot. It runs so freaking hot. So as you can see, the ambience I already took. Um, 
No load, it runs 44C, but the second you put it under 100% load with Prime 95, it just explodes, kind of. Um, instantly up to about 80, and then it goes to 100, and then it drops from 2.6 gigahertz down to 1.5 and kind of bounces back and forth, trying to keep that one core from overheating. Alright, so got a big mess of uh, random crap to remove. I got a lot of screws, and I forgot to put a bin out for a holding screw, so I might have to get one. But before we go into this, I'm going to do a tiny unboxing, and I'm going to get some of my some of my uh, oh my god that's so good uh, you'll notice this time I put all the drinks and stuff back there where they probably should have gone the first time oops all right by the way for the people who watched the PC build last time my super silverstone plate finally came in. I guess I'll unbox that first. Oh, dumb me. There's a knife right here. Let's see what it looks like. Also, try not to box myself. Or cut myself, because this thing is really sharp. I'll open it away. I don't just get my address out. And oh hey, it comes in a little box. This will be the Silverstone SFX to ATX power supply bracket that will let me install the power supply properly. Um, I'll probably might do a stream at some point where I uh, where I install this and install my other SSD and maybe do a little cable management. I don't know. It seems like kind of a boring thing to stream, so probably not going to. That's not apple juice, but good guess. Just in the spirit of the last time I did some unboxings, just throw that puppy over there. Oh man. Alright, let's open up our Kinder Egg first, because unboxing for some reason. I'm going to try a fancy way to open this. We just smash it. No, that just feels wrong. I'm not going to do that. And of course, if you don't know, um, with Kinder Eggs in the U.S., they have to put the toy separately from the chocolate because American kids are really dumb, I guess, or maybe we're just really scared. I don't, I don't know. But oh, well, there we go. But I don't think that the frosting and the taste inside changes. No, it's the same thing. It's two Ferrero Rochers in a, in a big tub of sugar. Cause it, it's what we like as Americans, is big, a big tub of sugar. Hopefully also a really large company controlling the, sugar, the large tub of sugar. So that they, we can't, you know, tell people that it's bad for you. I'm just gonna take a huge bite. Oh my god. It's like this really weird goopy pudding that's dried. I don't know what the deal is. It's really good though. Hello, Jojo the three. Alright, let's see what we got for a toy. I realize I'm kind of, if I put it over here, you can't see it. Oh. Alright, looks like some kind of plant or something. This is really dumb. Um, I really don't know what this is. Like a Minecraft? No. I think it's Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, actually this is a... Uh, this is decently appropriate. It's a wizard. You clip him in there. And then he has a stupid hat. And then he'll be the wizard he'll be the wizard companion on this um adventure, I guess. Should put him somewhere where he's visible. Um There, he's gonna be right right here. This is hard. It's gonna be right there. Oh you can't 
flipping see him. There you go. He's uh he's gonna be up here. His casters are squishy, so. Jojo the threeth? Okay. Proper uh pronunciation noted. Oh there's a little maze in here, guys. We can just do this real quick. And uh Oh, he's a marker. That's... I would almost regret that maze issue, but I really don't care. Let's see how he writes real quick. So he's a marker. Ooh, that's a really crappy looking marker. Uh, Gandalf, what does your marker look like? Ah, complete shit, because that's a crayon. Alright, you, you stay over here away from me. Solve the maze. To make sure. Oh, by the way, the computer bill was super fun to uh, clean up after. It took me like four hours to get all that crap boxed up and sorted. I'm gonna take one more. Uh... Hmm. And what we'll do? We'll use a second Kinder egg to uh, store the screws and stuff that come out of here. So I've already got the drive removed, the CD drive that nobody ever uses. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm a ranked uh, maze solver. Grand, a grandmaster, if you will. <laughs> oh, hey, that's kind of cool. This laptop has a little removable uh, slot in between the the two uh, heat dissipators that are connected by... Wow, it's really hard to get in and out. Anyway, it looks like that. And this fits in between... It looks like it fits in between the two heat dissipators and the heat pipes that connect them. That's kind of cool, but there's absolutely no dust on it, so... I'll just set this here. Oh, wow, that's really loud. I need to turn down my volume on my, la my other laptop. Who's being loud at me? No, I'm not. I'm good. Ah. Okay, so from here, I think this is the RAM compartment. I'll try and, at least when I do, um, when I open up stuff, I tend to try and leave the screws with the part if at all possible. Usually, like the usually RAM has a uh, little retainers. Does this one? No. But this is the RAM door. Put that there. That way we don't have to keep track of those tiny screws, which probably are not the same length as all the other ones. I don't think I'm going to have to remove the actual RAM in here. There are two sticks of 4 gig. Uh, I guess I should remove the battery. That's what you're supposed to do first. There's a little piece of something in there. We got here 5200 milliamp hours. This needs to be replaced, but that's not really part of the deal. Uh, okay, so it looks like we've got a plate that covers the bottom and goes like this all the way around here. So that's where all my screws are going to wind up coming out of, I think. I think that, this, I think this tab unlocks the drive. You can't really see it, but whatever. Alright, instead of using the Kinder Egg, because I don't know if these have different lengths or not, I'm going to lay them out in the order that I take them out. I know I'm not setting them in a container, which is terrible. I need to get one of those uh, magnetic trays. Just never got around to it. Should probably, yeah. Shouldn't do it to scale because I don't have enough room with all this crap on the table. You need more ukulele songs to play? Um... Let's see if this lifts. Yes, it does. I'm trying to think of some. I could make a magnetic tray, but it's a lot easier to just buy it. Crap, where did this come out of? One, two, three, four. It's always a little harder to do this when you're streaming because I'm trying to pay attention to like multiple things at once. Down. If this isn't super dusty inside, I'm gonna probably skip the dusting part because it kind of, it doesn't look like it's that dusty, and move straight into doing a thermal rework. 
Now the way I'm going to do it is um, I'm going to just put new paste the first time. And then I want to test it and see how much the new paste improves it. And then I will... Um, and then I'll test it with the actual shims on it, which should help because it puts more copper in there to pull off the heat before it becomes a problem. Um, but we'll see. Like, I, I don't know. I couldn't find any really good, like, decently done studies that um, really gave you any idea of what's going on with thermal shims, but I wanted to try. And I was, might as well do it on stream. I don't know how long this is going to take. This seems like it's going to be pretty easy to take apart. Here. Yeah, I, I already looked up the uh, teardown for this, and it's actually a really maintainable build, which is awesome. At least I hope it is. I might pull this apart and uh, find that it's a nightmare. I don't know. Did I get all the screws? Sorry, hit the... Uh, Sure, it's got little clips too. Oops. There we go. And hmm. All right, we'll just set you over here and see what we got. Wow, that is a really, really uh, wow. That is not. There's not much going on here. I'm gonna hold it up for you guys. That is a very small heat pipe and a really small copper copper plate. And it doesn't look like it even touches anything else to transfer the heat. It looks like the, this heat pipe does. If we look, yeah. So what a lot of times what they'll do, oh, it does, okay. So if you look here and we flip it up, you can see, uh, because a lot of times what they'll do with laptop manufacturers is they'll have this part and sometimes this part press up onto the top uh, or the bottom, depending on how the main board's oriented. And you'll get this transfer material right here, which is what they've set up. So right here, the heat, this is a thermally conductive, it looks like a plastic, probably infused with like a... Um, not sure actually, but anyway, so and it's got a little pad right here, which is really sad I think I can do a little bit better than that But um, so the uh The main heatsink rests right here and diffuses out into the case And out to the bottom which is right here and right here does get really really hot So it looks like there's a lot of room to shim especially in here because uh all it really does is have this one little tiny crappy uh, transfer foam pad. It's not very much. That's probably one of the major reasons it's overheating. There's not a lot of cooling going in here. The fan is nice and large for a laptop of this size. You're so smart and cool. Oh, thank you. Not that cool. Okay, so I'm going to start with... Uh, it really doesn't the fan spins free that's good it, it's really not that dusty in here um not sure why yeah I just there's just not a lot of dust um probably because the fan intake kind of this is the this is all the intake has is the, are those holes it doesn't really intake from anywhere obvious it intakes right here there's nothing here to really I guess it pulls from the back plate where there are holes. To me, it seems like what would happen in this design is it would wind up intaking through here and coming in through the top and just recycling hot air. That doesn't seem like a great idea. That's uh, kind of sorry, but I'm not going to try and fix it. It's got, it's got some of these holes, which I'm told are not. They don't come that way. Someone's done that. But I'll leave it for now, just because I uh, I don't want to put a piece of tape over it and just say, oh, does it work well with ventilation or not? That's kind of dumb. Oh, thanks for the ears. I mean, thanks for the, the compliment about the ears. I'm good at wording. Oh, it's got, these are numbered. 
and I've almost took out number four. All right, let's go with number one first. I know it's probably kind of hard for you guys to see this. Maybe if I move it over, I can work on it a little closer to the second camera. I think all these are the same length, so I'm not going to worry too much about uh, their orientation. Rotate it. All right, now you can kind of see a little bit better on that over here. So what we're taking off is this plate with this uh, heat pipe and then into this heat sink fan module. Wait, where did I put the one screw that I just took out? I am so good at this. That's interesting. What the hell is that? There's like silly t sticky tack or something right here. I guess to keep it from flopping? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to assume that this was probably that. So it says one, two, wait, it's hard to see. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Where did I learn about computers? I just, I don't know. I always liked computers and then I got a bunch of junk ones and I played with them. Watch videos and junk. Nothing special. Didn't go to school for them or anything. I just like working on electronics. They're fun. And I just almost lost that screw. Come here. Don't make me get the tweezers. gonna have to get probably won't need the tweezers for that actually because once this comes out we can see what kind of thermal paste job the uh, last person did too that'll be kind of entertaining all right so we should be good to just come right out uh come on don't want to scratch anything oh my god this is a really really sorry Ugh. it looks like it transfers down through the bottom too which means it would go up into the front underneath the LCD, I think. All right, so that's our our sorry little thermal unit. It's not terrible, it's just not great. This piece is way too thin. They skimped out too much on this, especially. There is a little bit of dust in the fins that I'll blow out in a second, but uh, right now I'm not, not too interested in that. Uh, that's really weird. I don't know why they would do that. This is this clay tack that they use is probably insulative too, so drive heat would probably I could probably put a thermal pad in here instead. That'd be a lot better. Okay, I'm not gonna bother taking the fan out. It looks clean. So there's our CPU. And there's our tiny little surface area for our mobile CPU. I think it's an SLAC or whatever they're called. I don't remember. They have a weird package name for this particular CPU. All right, so. Now we're just gonna clean this thermal paste off and put some new on. Get this out of here. Want some more apple juice though. That's totally apple juice. All right, so that's my old little thing of uh, thermal rework stuff. Mostly I'm going to be going for the thermal surface purifier and the thermal material remover. And this time I've got, oops, sorry, keep hitting this camera. It's, it's like right next to me here. Some I've got paper towels. And uh, buh, 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 what thermal paste are we gonna use? I've got Grizzly, but I don't really care to use my tiny little tube of Grizzly that I bought for my build. The cat card. Here are our thermal shims, by the way. Bought them off Amazon for like five or ten bucks. I'll take some, I'll put that out for now. Um, I'm just gonna go with uh, Arctic Silver 5, probably. That's what I use for most stuff. I got some thermal padding too, though I don't have a lot, so I don't wanna use all of it on this goofy little project. 
I don't need much. I'm gonna put this on the floor since it's like blocking. There we go. Alright, so... Let's remove some thermal material. Or just drop it. Make sure my ears are good. Alright, so this stuff will evap pretty quickly because I'm pretty sure it's alcohol based. It doesn't... You know what? The, the thermal material wasn't on there all the way. It spread out, but on the edges, which I bet is where that really hot core was, on the edges it doesn't have any really. Oh, I love thermals, thermal remover. Is there a hair in there? That's gross. Some with a beard in this thing? Yeah. Ah, it gets so shiny so quickly with this stuff. I love it. I always make sure I've got a bunch of this stuff on hand. Because otherwise this stuff does not come off easily at all. Especially if it's super old and it's got any kind of adhesive property to it. Depending on what they had in the factory that day, they just squirt it on there. I should probably get a like another camera and have like a macro. I feel bad that this really is not close enough at all. One second. Maybe I can get a little bit closer here. Uh, if I just work a little closer to the camera, I think I'll be okay. Okay, so. Uh, it's still really not that great. Um. It might be a little bit better. I wish I could get it closer though. Alright, so that's what we cleaned off. Got all the thermal paste off of it. Just want to make sure I didn't get any on that. There's not really any traces up here to uh, short with it, but I still want to be nice and thorough. I don't want to leave a bunch. Alright. Feed the cats and wash the dishes. I'm, I'm not going to be done by the time you get back, so. Now, ideally, I should be using a lint-free cloth for this, because, yeah, this is going to get fibers in there, which don't transfer as well as the liquid metal, but whatever. There's one nice thing about having a... This is going to be loud, so um, if you're listening to it really loudly, I'm sorry. And uh, maybe turn it down a little bit. In fact, you know, I could probably just unhook the mic for a sec. One sec. Oh no, we lost Gandorf. And we're back. Sorry, I just, I know that would have been super loud and annoying, so. There is a chance it would have compressed it out, but I didn't want to run the risk of freaking somebody out. We lost Gandalf, so, uh. Alright, so, now we need to clean this surface as well. It's got a little bit of goop on it. You can kind of see where, uh. There really wasn't much paste right here and up here. So I'm just going to set it on here to do it so you can see it. I can hold this one up to the camera all the way. Just immediately renders it into a liquid, which is wonderful. Oh my god, this is such a cheap piece of crap. And this probably isn't going to shine up at all. This is practically just like pot metal copper. So cheap. 
The nice thing is we'll be adding some nice and shiny shims to the underside of this. But we'll do that as a phase two so we can see if the shims really helped or if just repasting it helped because I kind of want to know how effective the thermal shims are going forward so I can know if I want to actually include it in like when I'm working on a laptop with heat problems because I know a few people who have laptops with heat problems and I don't want to waste my time if it doesn't work. Okay, so we've got them both clean. Now we can use the surface purifier. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, see if it says anything. To prepare surface for thermal interface material. Keep away from children. Apply several drops to the thermal mating surface and wipe gently with a lint-free cloth to dry. I should, use, should have used a lint-free cloth, but I didn't. So I'm just going to drop. Ugh, it turned... Why is it black on top? It's almost like someone just jammed a nozzle into a bunch of thermal paste. Maybe it blackens with oxygen? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. No, it looks perfectly clear. Alright, so... And we'll just... We're just putting it on and wiping it off. Putting it on, wiping it off. Uh, seeing all these towel fibers is driving me a little bit insane. I, I have a lint-free cloth in here, don't I? Yes, I do. Should have been using that, but I didn't. This came, what did this come with? Some camera thing I bought? It's kind of like relaxing and uh, cathartic. Weirdly, trying to make something smooth and not nasty. Ooh, I just put my finger on it. You don't want to do that. You never want to touch these with your fingers because uh, oil kind of prohibits transfer. It gets more of an insulator. It's not not a great conductor. No, I just got my fingers all over the towel, and I'm sure something transferred, but you know. On the whole, you don't want to just put fingerprints all over it. Alright, time for some Arctic Silver 5. Now with this stuff, you can kind of... Now you don't want to do a, a pea size, because obviously the die is like... 10 millimeters by, by 15 millimeters or something. So you don't need a pea size, but if you do over apply on at least this processor... I don't think there's a huge issue with it, because uh, it's all sealed from the top. There are no traces or anything. I'm not going to make a big mess of it either, so we'll use. I'm going to try and not put my finger in front. Is that a hair? That looks like a hair. I don't want a hair in this. Okay. Sorry, there was a hair. Didn't want the hair in there. Probably gonna do a little bit more than that. That was a little much, but... I might pre-spread this one just a tiny bit because uh, I don't want an instance happening like it was obviously on there where the paste didn't quite get on there. And I haven't done a lot of uh, tiny Where are you? I haven't done a lot of tiny thermal thermal reworks, like tiny dyes to deal with, so. Yeah, I definitely used a little too much. That's okay though. This stuff is very uh viscous, is that the right word? Elastic? 
you don't have to do this. You can just reapply pressure and be like, yay, I did it, but just want to be sure. In fact, most of the times this is a waste of time. You just want to put it on there and mash it down, but it's small. It's easy to do this, so I'm just going to... I know Linus Tech Tips had a, a big video on this, doing all the different methods, and pretty much showed none of them made any difference, so just use the fastest one and don't worry about it. This is kind of zen, zen y though, like not the currency. God, that was an awful joke. Okay, that is a lot of thermal paste. Uh, way more than I needed to put on there. So let's just scrape some off. Scrape. Can you guys hear and everything okay? Just, uh, I don't really get a chance to, I didn't sit down and make any test videos of this because I'm stupid, so I don't really know if there are any quality issues. I really don't want that stuff down there. It's a peeve of mine. I don't want to leave it on the actual PCB, regardless of uh, whether or not it can actually do any damage. This is actually kind of a pain in the butt to clean up. I'm gonna try it the, this way. And dab it out this way. I really just say dab it out. Boof. Make sure everything's working. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't figure that this stream will be quite as crazy. I'm sure the maid outfit was way more popular than just this shirt with some elf ears. But I wanted to do something. Uh, I'm going to do one more cleaning off that. I put too much on. Next time, I, when I come back in and redo it with the shims, I won't, won't bother. Because uh, it's just going to be an annoying cleanup process if I do it. I can probably safely clean around the edges too, because it's going to spread. Like, no doubt about it, it's going to spread off the side a little bit. Being such a dork, I don't need to do this. Weird catharsis. Alright. So now, I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy back on, then I'll put a couple of screws in the bottom so we can turn it on and just, uh, okay, that was easy enough. Which one is the one, two, three? They're numbered, which it's, I know it's not really a big deal, but if there's a procedure, I'd like to follow it. One, two, three, four. Okay. It's nice of them to number it like that, but really, you just always want to do diagonals so that your pressure differential isn't crazy between the two points. I think all these screws are literally the same. It's good designing really to use all the same screws for everything. Probably makes bulk purchasing cheaper too. Alright, so the name of the game is definitely pressure for thermal transfer, so I'm gonna get these all a little bit tighter. Not crazy tight.
And we're good. Uh, all right, I'll just put this guy back down. Oh, it looks like it hinges this way. I'm not going to go ahead and put all these screws back in. It's just, uh, but I'll put most of them back in. I'm sure the thermal dissipation of the, the screws is uh, not particularly important. I do want to get the, all the covers back on though. Put the battery back in because I can actually have a slight difference with the temperature depending on where the actual charging circuit is and how it's designed. I want everything to be the same. Mostly. I know I'm going to wind up with screws missing. I'll have to order some. Because I'm being stupid. And let's put our battery back in. Make sure everything still fits. And I think I dropped my power cable. These evaporate really quickly, quickly so I should cover them up. I'm smart. Yes. Uh. All right, boom up. Now my basic. Of course my ears are real. Can zoom the camera back out again. At least for a second while I'm doing other stuff. Just have to remember to bring it back down. Oh, thanks. They're just really cool costume ears. I mean, real ears. They're a little lopsided. I'm really sensitive about their lopsidedness, so I don't say anything. Oh my god, Windows. Hurry up. Is that a salad? Oh, it's gonna take a second to boot up, so I'm just gonna sit here and be an IRL streamer. Everybody in the US is kind of getting crazy weather right now, I think. You dare me to cover my face with my hair? Uh, that is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Here, I'll, I'll do a partial for you, though. Mm hmm, that's not going to work. That's decently covered. No, it smells good. I'm a emo, emo elf. Oh my god, Windows, why do you always have to update? Welcome back, I've become an emo elf. Emo elf. Bop, bop. Ow. Here in my eyeballs. Ah, there we go. What kind of cat food do you give your cats? What do I see with my emo eyes? I 
And probably some kind of New Order music video. I don't know. Come on. I'm rough on everything. It's so awful. Ugh, I don't like this dress. It, like, it would be great if it had a bigger neck to it. I hate tight neck stuff. It feels gross. You don't know what kind of cat food you fed your cats? I turned off updates and it's still doing this. This is so mean. Hurry up. I don't know if there's anything else I can do while I'm waiting for this. Oh, we are going to be using something I haven't used before today when we get to the thermal shim part. Basically, um, when you put shims, I'll show you guys the shims. That's kind of cool. Do an elven dance? I don't want- there's like a bunch of equipment around me. I would just knock stuff over if I danced. Ooh, they're like individually wrapped. What the hell? I think they come in varying degrees of thickness because I should have just gotten the extra thick. That's what I like. Alright, so I basically got this little baggie full of marijuanas. I mean, copper. And just a little. 24% complete. This is great, Microsoft. I love you so much. And it's just these little guys, um, varying degrees of thickness based on what you think you can get in there. I think in our case, we can put a uh, pretty decent sized one in there. That's what she said or whatever. I'm sure somebody's got to make the joke. Um, it's a nice shiny, got a smooth surface. And basically, you don't ever want these to come loose inside your computer because they're decently conductive and, well, you, your computer's probably not going to have a good time. If it shorts out a power rail, it might start a fire. So, basically you want to use adhesive when you're putting these in and you want to adhere them to the heat sink. So in this case, it would be that little copper piece of crab at the top. So you use adhesive for that. And then you use, uh, come on. And it, then you use um, regular thermal paste. Because if you ever have to take it off, you don't have to pry it off the chip. You'd rather, it's a lot better to have to pry it off the actual thing you can take out of the computer and not worry about destroying. I can't do an oven. Dance. I wish I could. Just gonna put these back in here. I think we'll be able to use the extra thick ones. These are pretty thick. Because the more thickness you add, the more buffer material you're gonna have. Oh my god, why did this have to do this now? Come on. Anyway. Is it really going to sit here and do more updates? Well, it feels like it's running cooler. Subjectively. I was really hoping when I uh, paused updates that this wouldn't, wouldn't happen. I thought it planned for everything. 75%. Go away. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of the Kinder Egg since it's gonna take a sweet time. Here, I'll just bevel it toward you guys and you can see it. Um, why does thermal paste help or why do thermal shims help? Oh, hey, my stomach's gonna be mad.
in terms of thermal paste, um, I'll just go, we'll go through both. I shouldn't have even bothered being like, oh, hey, which one? Um, so thermal paste helps because little girl 005 hater. Okay. Anyways, thermal paste helps because um, the, the two surfaces that have to transfer heat, because CPUs have to transfer heat away from themselves via their, usually their heat spreader, sometimes depending on it, sometimes just a regular die. And the heat spreader has to transfer off to something else. And those two surface, surfaces, those two surfaces are not usually completely flat. They're usually bumpy on both sides. You can do something called lapping to flatten them, but that's kind of a pain in the butt. So you put an intermediary in there because otherwise it's going to be air, and air is a pretty decent insulator for thermal stuff. So you put a paste in there that's metallic, and it has a much better, it's some kind of, I don't remember, some kind of delta number. Anyway, it transfers the heat a lot faster. Can you do anime stream? Uh, yeah, I'll do, let's watch Akame Ga Kill or Mega Sprite. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing now. Got to finish this. But maybe later. Friend me or something. All right. Okay, so thermal shims are a little more ambiguous in how they work. Basically, you're just adding more copper. Um so that you have a bigger buffer more like if you look at really large heat sinks in for instance the computer i built had a massive heat sink it can buffer more heat while the uh circulation tries to get rid of it essentially so adding little bits of more copper when there's not very much to start with sometimes sometimes it can help and sometimes it won't that's why i'm doing this video or whatever I was gonna do just a regular YouTube video, but I kind of felt like streaming it, so. Mega Sprite. What's Mega Sprite even about? I haven't heard of that one. I know Akame ga Kill, but not Mega Sprite. Okay. So let's reopen our open hardware monitor. When I get my hands on it, this is essentially what I'm gonna do. I wanted to see if it was even worth it before I uh, invested in the time to do it. Ooh, violent. I love violence. Alright, so right now... Let me move some stuff over here. So right now, our, um, our control where we did nothing to the computer was 44C, um, no load, and 99C at load. Right now I can't say it's not at load because I think Windows is doing some background crap. But the um, ambient no load really hasn't changed. It's around 44C, so that's not boding well so far for the thermal paste. I think the stuff that was on there was pretty, pretty recently replaced, it seemed like. It didn't seem like complete dust. So anyway, let's run Prime95. I'm not going to run it very long, because once it hits 99, there's not really a point in going any further. It's just going to throttle to keep it away from the T-Max. Maximum heat. Let's see what we got here. I should have probably turned on the... Uh... I didn't instantly hit 100 this time, so that is a market improvement. Um... It's getting there though. Um, let's log sensors. It must reset. Does it really reset the plots every single time? It's kind of annoying. Anyway, I wanted a plot up here because I had it set up for a do to do a plot. For to do a plot. That's great. But it didn't. Alright, so we're approaching. 86 or so? Let's see if I can get this to log. Ooh, the fan's really kicking in now. 
It still hasn't hit 99 though. It hit 99 very quickly last time. I know you can't see it. Um, no. oh, you're really not gonna plot anymore, are you? That's kind of crappy. Anyway, so far we've hit 88 or so Celsius. So far it's actually holding strong without having to throttle, which is awesome. Yeah, it's very noisy. Move it away a little bit. I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see the, the temps it's hitting right now. Okay, this probably is not helping you at all. And I'm a terrible person for having done it. I'm sorry. Alright, so it's at about 88 right now. So this is definitely uh, an improvement. It hasn't hit 99 yet. So this stuff helped a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the numbers here. So we've got... And then, um, new paste, 44C, and it looks like we're going to wind up at about 93C, and no throttle. Okay. Let me save that. I'll update it if it winds up being, uh, different. It doesn't look like it's going to be. Just getting rid of a lot of heat over here. Yeah, it updated. There we go. This is mostly just a waiting game, so I'm gonna eat more of my Kinder Egg. Oh no, it melted a bunch because it was next to the other computer. Oh, it makes it kind of easier to eat in a way. Yum. It's kind of like ice cream that's not cold. Oh my god, it's all over my lips and my teeth. It kind of is like the inside of a Cadbury cream egg. It's really viscous and gets all over your mouth, though. I'm gonna stop talking about it. It's so good. I want more. And I called it. It looks like it's going to be at about 93C. At least at 5 minutes, which was what I originally planned on. Yeah, 100% 5 minutes. Looks like it might be going up to 94. At the very least, with the Arctic Silver, at least it's going to take it a while to throttle. So, um, that's an improvement. More creaming stuff. I don't have any more of these. Oh my god, so good. Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that. Because it's kind of weird. Whew. It's averaging 94 right now, but we're past the five minute window, so I'm gonna try and keep it at least somewhat uh, coherent. Alright, so let's drop out of let's drop out of Prime 95. Goes right back down to the 60s. And it's still got hot. I wouldn't want that on my lap. It's not hot to the touch really, but it's getting there. Alright, we're going to go ahead and shut down. Hopefully Windows doesn't need to... Hopefully Windows doesn't need to uh, update again. They're going to release some in between me working on it, probably. You going to shut off? Okay. Alright, let's just unplug it. And... Okay. 
take all the panels back off. I think after I'm done with this, I'm going to run one extra test where I cover these holes and see if that makes any difference at all in the thermals because I'm kind of interesting. I always wanted to know if you drill holes where the intake fan is, if you actually help or if you or if the actual designers of the case have like a jet stream idea because it looks like I can see angled I can see an angled intake here that would imply that maybe if this weren't here it would suck air across the ram but I feel like I don't know I mean I'm sure they put a lot of uh, effort into designing the case versus me just sitting here looking at it and going that doesn't seem right but we will see Engineers are just people too, so I don't always do everything right. But I generally do trust them when they put out electronics and they work. So get lifts from the back. Oh, I left one screw in because I'm a smarty. All right, and there we go. Oh, there's some thermal transfer material in that too. Planned obsolescence, I mean, yeah, but if the computer runs hot when it first comes out, um, it's not going to get reviewed well. And computers like this usually weren't, I don't think these were at, like, Best Buys and, ah, well, that heat sink's pretty hot. Um, I don't think computers like this were at the Best Buy and stuff, I think you had to order them. Maybe in Asia they were in retail, so, um kind of hard to sell someone. A lot of people, if they're going to impulse buy a laptop or not do any any research at all, they're going to go to Best Buy and be like, I want the one that plays Assassin's Creed Unity. And then the guy's going to go like, well, what's your budget? And they're going to be like 2500 bucks, and then they're going to give them a $2,000 computer for 2500 bucks. And they're going to sell them a $300, um, if it breaks, we probably still won't fix it plan. I'm taking these out out of order because I don't care. It doesn't matter that much. Even the big heat sinks that put like a lot of pressure down don't tell you. They just tell you to do diagonals. They don't tell you to um, do one specifically. If you're really smart about what you buy, you can get an okay computer there. That's a Radiohead album. But, um, all right, this thing's a little hot potato, wow. All right, so first thing we want to know is uh, how much slop we have here, how long these screws are, and how thick the plates are. It's pretty much going to determine if we can get enough pressure without causing a failure on the threads. Since the threads are pretty tight, as long as we can get like two or three notches down, I don't think, I don't foresee a problem. I'm gonna use a product I've never used before, so hopefully it doesn't, and hopefully it goes horribly, because if I had to replace this, it wouldn't be that expensive. <laughs> nice as they are. What do you guys think? Should I go with an extra thick one, or should I go with something a little more modest? I'm not gonna go with the thinnest ones I have, because, uh, I think it goes from like 2 to 6 mil. Um, I'm not going to use the thinnest ones I have because I know it can take more than that. Use one of these, uh, one of these tough boys here. And, uh, those are pretty thick too. Those are too thin. I can't tell which one's thicker. Mm, shut up, stomach. Alright, well, I think I'm going to go with the thickest ones I've got, just to see. There's a, that'll give us the biggest, you know, the theory is the more the more copper you have, the, uh, the more uh, buffer you have, the better you're going to be able to get the heat away from you before you overheat. But we'll see. Let's see if I can get there. I think there's a couple people I know that might want to watch this. Sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna send out a few messages. Okay, 
Just give me one second. Alright, I guess that'll work. I don't know. I'm gonna get one more. Nah. No. Oh. Okay, I think that's it. I will stop delaying. There's Restream, Donut the Elf Queen, oh that thanks. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the thermal interface material, um, and then we'll get to using a product I haven't used before, which is uh, this stuff, which is an actual adhesive, not just a interface material. Let's use this. Oh, look, I think it tells you how to use them right on the, uh, right on the little syringes there. Just, ah, no. Um, let's see. For instructions, C Arctic Silver, five minute one to one mix. I think this is probably a lot like Bondo. But I'm gonna look up the Arctic Silver website real quick just to make sure I'm not missing a detail, like you have to spit on it or something. ArcticSilver.com. I'm kind of looking at that. There we go. Thermal adhesive. Quick cure silver epoxy. Which one do I have? Just so I can read real quick. Silver Thermal Adhesive. Five minute one to one mix. That's pretty quick here. A two part permanent silver adhesive for thermal joints in minimum bond line applications. That's fine. Not intended for CPU and CPU heatsink. Well, too bad because I'm going to do it. I wish I'd known. <laughs> I purchased I just kind of bought it I was like eh well, I think it'll be fine um, what they're saying right there probably is not intended for CPU and CPU heatsink is because they don't want you to affix a giant heatsink permanently to your uh, to your motherboard and you can't get your CPU out oh no I can't really do anything about that right now Okay, so this is the part we're going to be working on. I'm going to lower the camera down so you can see what I do. Sort of. Alright, so... I'm getting messages. Okay, so let's get the thermal paste that we just put on off of this. Sorry, I'm trying to keep track of too many things at once. Where's my... There we are. Alright. I'm not going to use my free cloth for this because it would ruin it. As cheap as they are, I don't have to order a bunch more. Plus I can just wipe it off after this with the lint free. It'll be fine. All right, all the material is removed. It's the British, uh, it's the British pronunciation of material. I think, I'm sure it's at least one of the dialects is material. Don't know why. Or maybe it's just Warhammer audiobooks and they're trying to mess with the uh, non-British people by making them say stupid crap. Probably what it is. Oh, it sounds cool. 
I'm gonna keep saying. All right, so that's a little shiny, a little bit. Keep in mind there's a camera over there. All right, so it's a uh, um, So you can see the uh, little indent right here where we've got our dye pressing in. It uh, oxidized a different color slightly and stained a little bit. So we are going to use that as our guide. I'm just going to use one of these because, uh, I don't know. I could potentially stack two in there, but it'd be my like I wouldn't be able to get them back off and then the screw wouldn't go down. Um, I can always test later and see um, how this is going to do. I know that this will go down no problem. That's not going to take up enough of the threads on the screw to really matter. So let's do this. Part A. I think what you have to do clean this guy off too. I think we have to mix them. It's like an epoxy basically. So, make sure that's lined in there pretty good. Make sure these are both ready and not going to jam up on me. Though, usually you don't have to hurry until they've uh, started mixing. That little sniff. No, I'm not actually going to sniff it. Could definitely have um, something unpleasant in there. Right, so, we're going to try and kind of lay it in that square, which is a similar size. Oh, I should probably clean the. I'm just going to use purifier, though. Probably clean this just just to be completely OCD about it. Sorry, not trivializing OCD. I've uh, had actual minor OCD and it sucked. So All right, that's nice and clean. Just handle it by the edges so that we don't get our... I've got that wonderful elven agility. I don't ever drop anything. Okay, so... Thinking I'll put the epoxy on the actual plate. Part A. Let's see how viscous we are here. Oh, that starts to come out quick. Okay, that that's gonna be probably good enough, I think. Be a little bit more. There we go. And then we've got our part part B here. This is probably gonna come out really fast too, so I need to be careful. Once it breaks that surface tension. Ooh, this stuff is really thick. Better not be dried out. Come on. I know you want to, I know you want to do it. Here we go. Oh, it made me jump because I thought that it was uh, going to do a weird reaction or something. Okay, I need this. No, <laughs> no. Okay, I need to cover these. Uh, kind of bungled that a little bit. I already covered this one, so. All right, so now I get to mix them. Um, a little bit of slop there. Okay, so this should be... I don't know what the hardening time is on it particularly, but... I'm sure it's not going to be so fast that I can't mix it up a little bit. Alright, I put on way too much, but that's okay. S smush. this down here so I can actually apply some decent pressure. So that you want as little of the thermal paste actually it came off course a little bit. And you want as little of it as possible in between the two areas because the best conductors are still going to be the actual copper. 
not the paste itself. Sorry, I'm cover I'm totally covering it. Okay, I'm just we're just gonna let that dry. Hopefully it only takes five minutes. I don't think it works like that though. Oops. Oh, when I, I jinxed myself when I dropped the, the plate. <laughs> Oops. All right, let's go ahead and clean off the, uh, while that dries. Let's rotate. Actually, we don't really need to clean this off, do we? In fact, that'd be kind of stupid. Let's make sure we get the adhesive off before it dries. Oh, it's already started to dry a little bit. Just make sure you get all of it off before it dries so I can keep using this wonderful little spatula. Also, because I'm about to, to do another spread out of this, may not really have to reapply. Yeah, I, I probably should. Not a full reapplication, I'm just going to put a tiny little dot in the middle. Mm. Just want to have a little bit of extra because I know some got took off by the uh, by the actual sink. So I want to make sure that there's enough on there. I'm pretty sure there's enough now. Have a close inspection at it. You over here. I wonder if it lets off any thermals as a part of its reaction, like a lot of bondos and stuff do. Nope. Okay, let's let that sit for a little bit. And, uh. Oh. It looks thick enough. I think it'll be alright. A little bit extra for good luck. Just put a little bit more on here. Then when I apply pressure, it should even it all out. I just want a little bit of extra. Because I can't ever leave anything alone. <laughs> How I am, I guess. All right, let's look while we're, while we're sitting here. Let's see if there's anything I can do with the thermal padding that I've got. Also, what, what do you think this thing does? Looks like a little ground or something. Let's look. Where does this connect to? Oh yeah, it's right next to the power cable connector. I think. Oh yep. Yeah. So that would is that is that like chassis ground? Let me look here. Real quick. No something else. I'd have to take it apart. It looks like it might be... Might be a sensor or something. Nice and slow. I wonder if this stuff's still tacky yet. Yes, it is. Um, I thought it was going to dry in like five minutes. But it is, it is definitely not drying in five minutes. Is this going to be a really long stream? Just going to scrape away the excess. It's still moving too, oh my gosh. Did I not put in enough of the, uh... Setter, maybe? Doesn't even feel tacky. 
It just feels completely useless still. Yeah, I can still completely wipe it off with a brush too. Oh man, I'm getting crap all over my fingers. It kind of stinks too. Ugh. Pretty sure I can use this on my hands. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm probably going to have to reapply that crap. Whew. This stuff stinks too. Um, thermal material remover. I'll go with white for purification. And I'm gonna look up real quick what the uh thermal adhesive. Click up for more information. Except when I click nothing happens. I need to open this up and they only test in like Microsoft Edge, probably. Oh crap, I just got thermal paste all over my keyboard. Oh well. It makes me look like I'm like I work hard. Alright, Microsoft Edge. Oh wow, it doesn't work here either. It also says this is discontinued. This is what? What's this called? Just Arctic Silver. It says five minutes at a one to one mix. Did I not mix it one to one maybe? This is gonna be super messy if I have to if I have to redo it. Oh well, I've never actually used this product before, so I guess there was gonna be some trial and error to it. Looks like it's stiffening up a little bit, but I bet that's we're at the five minute mark. If that's as good as it's gonna get, I should scrape it off and do it over. Alright, so we're gonna do that over. That's fine. I'm, ba I'm barely pressing on it. I'm just gonna use this. All right, I'm just gonna see if this remover will even work on this. It might not. I'm sure that the bonding agent is completely different. And the fact that it has one is also completely different. Let's try it anyway. Oh yeah, that's not... Eh? That is uh, not coming off as, as easily. It's okay. A little bit of pressure will take it right off. All right, that's good enough. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna use a, a new one of these, just to make my life easy. Let's purify it. Where's the idea? All right, purifying this. I know this is kind of boring, by the way, but I mean, I'm in IRL, so uh, don't judge me. <laughs> okay, let's do this over again without me boogering it up so bad. One-to-one <laughs> -one mixture, that's what I need to remember. I think I did not one-to-one. -one. All right, so I'm just gonna drop it on there after I get this. Can we see clearly? Clearly enough. Let's move this over here. Get a little bit closer to you guys. There we go. Alright, let's try one to one this time. Because I'm pretty sure I did not do one to one last time. 
someone beep me one sec. <laughs> you two nice cupcakes. Ah, that's way too much. I hurt myself today. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and like get a chunk of it out of there. There we go. That was pretty easy. This is gonna be part B. Is this one? Let's try it. I think last time I just I did not get a one to one. This time, hopefully, I will. All right. Come on. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm not gonna. And that reminds me, I need to get a new another scale. I loaned one to one of my friends a long time ago. We were making something, I don't remember what. Okay, I think that's, that's about even. Now let's just, uh... Just do a little swirl here, get it... Get it mixin'. I think we're good. All right, I'm a little more a little more confident this time than I was last time. Let's see. Can't get this shim to get the heck on here. Perfect. Time to mess it up. Smush. I feel like I should pressure fit this, but uh, I don't really want to sit here for five minutes. I'll do little bits of pressure for five minutes. And I really wish someone was here to like scratch my nose. At least I will be. Uh, I'm wishing for it shortly. Alright, so this part's fun. You guys excited for this part, especially? Anybody has any song requests? Uh, I could probably play one. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. Ah, right, moved. Back to your house. You know what? Screw this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. There's an easier way to do this. Uh, I'm afraid that's gonna slide it though. Um, there's an easier way though. One sec. Handy old uh, wood clamps. Just have to make sure I get it in the center. Please don't send it all squirting out. All right, that's a nice pressure fit, or it will be. Perfect. Let's see, just, just clamped in place. That way the minimal amount of thermal paste will be in the middle when it dries. The less medium you have, generally the better. For thermal paste anyway, because it's uh... It's good for what it is, but it's not nearly as good as actual copper. Checking my messages. For some reason. Ugh. I actually thought it was Tuesday today, for some reason. Which is kind of creepy considering I'm going somewhere tomorrow. I thought I had like three more days to prepare. Uh, 
I am bad at time, typically. I'm going down to the south coast to, like, hang out. It's kind of a weird, dingy little town. It has its charm, but man, ugh. It's, um... Well, rent's at least cheap down there. They do have that going for them. I think it's like eight fifty for a two bedroom, something like that. A really nice two bedroom that's been completely redone inside. But you also have like I want to say you have three people per floor on your side, and all of them scream all the time. And little kids yell and stomp up and down the stairs, and you just like I'll be like laying asleep in the living room. And you'll just hear some little kid scream and then stomp up the stairs, like hitting his bicycle and everything along the way. And then there's like domestic abuse upstairs. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting, but I don't know if I could live like that all the time. Just that much noise all the time. It's comfy to just chill out in, at least, though. Really hope this works this time. I don't want to have to wait a super long time. But to be fair, after it's, after it's gone a little ways, even if it's not perfectly set, it's going to be pressure fitted in there. I'm not super worried about it. It'll have time to dry on its own later. So I'll give it a couple more minutes, then we'll put it in, and we'll get our temperatures going. And then we'll do one more test. Because I don't really... I'm kind of looking at this thermal interface right here. I'm trying to think of what I could do to maybe make it better. There's this whole little piece right here is for heat transfer. It's basically a big thermal pad. And then it's got this down here, which reaches down to the top of this guy. Which, I don't know. That's gonna take a lot of thermal pad material to make bigger and more effective. And this really won't matter if I do that either. So... Mm. How much thermal pad do I have? Thermal padding is actually pretty expensive. I'm not actually sure why. If anybody knows why exactly it's so expensive. I think this was 13 bucks for me. And it's 50 mil square. One mil thick. Six watts per micro kelvin, I think. Milli kelvin. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't have very much of this, and I don't want to use it all on this job. If this if the shim works out, I won't bother. But maybe if the shim doesn't work out very well, I'll think about um, putting a little bit of this guy in there. I'd probably just maybe extend this... Oh, you can't see my finger. Because this touches the CPU right here, and I'd probably just extend uh, extend it out, maybe give it a couple more in width and put this just stack this up a few times on there might help but I'm not entirely convinced that this is uh, super effective there's not a lot of material for the the actual heat to go into here it's just kind of like a, a secondary measure I don't think this I don't know what kind of plastic this is but I seriously doubt it it's gonna do a lot that's interesting. It's got a little ducting vent thing here. It's actually a little... So it wants it to go in this way, and then around... 
around. No. No, it just wants it to come this way across the ram, and then ingress into here, and then egress out here. Oh, that's probably terrible, but... Basically, this slot, this uh, set of uh, vents right here. Here, I'll come in here, go across the ram, ingress into the fan's upper intake, which is kind of crappy. It's got to do a 90 degree turn. And then it'll egress out through the filter. I don't know if I would have gone with that design, but I am not a, like... I'm not a laptop engineer type person. I haven't made enclosures for a living. All right, so I think we're we're good. Let's see if it actually set, or if we're in for a world of sadness here. Give me a. Uh... Just gonna try and give it a little push. work. Actually, I'm just going to touch the, uh, it's a little bit tacky still, but, uh, I can tell it's hardening properly now. So, uh, I'm just going to go, go with this and see what happens. See if it helps at all. All right. So let's just, um, just going to wipe this off real quick. Then we're just going to fit it back in and we're on our test. So I'm I'm genuinely curious if uh because I've only seen a few instances of people doing this and saying oh it works really great with this really weird laptop that I've never heard of. I want to see how it does if you just kind of apply it as a general rule to a laptop that's running hot. Okay, oh, did it just move? Please no. I don't think it did. You have to remember is that these are going to be hovering quite a bit higher than they were before, so we have to be really careful not to mess up by too much pressure or not have enough. Of course, you've got enough here, but now that it's it's raised up a little bit, you want to actually you want to actually be gentle with how you do this because uh, you could, in theory, bow the Thing and not have it not sit right, it could peel the thermal paste up and scrape it off if it's tensioned improperly. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, space for these though. Awesome, awesome. Could have probably added another one if I wanted to. But I don't really want it to have to go through multiple. I think you get diminishing returns as you as you go through multiple um, transfer interfaces. I think you slowly kind of lose out on that. That benefit that you had, adding more material, get more pressure on it too. This way, this is awesome. Feels almost like a real life heat sink now. Gotta be careful though. I don't want to bend it. I'm gonna try and tighten it all the way down. That one's all the way hand tight. Make sure this one's good. All the way hand tight over here. Some of them tightened a lot more than others. All the way hand tight. So I'd say we definitely got more pressure going on here. I'm going to clean the back of it off. Just because uh, I know that that interface, uh, or that thermal transfer foam or pad or whatever is back here. So might as well give it a, as much of a chance as I can. And let's go ahead and put this guy back on. Derp, this way. All right. Just gonna put two screws in just like before. And there's probably more screws. I know I'm gonna lose screws by the end of this, I guess. I just, uh, have to deal with that mentally later. <laughs> on my hands and knees on the floor, most likely. Probably have extras of these. These look standard. I mean, all screws are pretty much standard, but... Oh, okay. 
And we're going to put in our little filter. If you want to call that a filter. The more I think about this thing, the dumber I think it is. This must have been like a gimmick. To be like, yeah, look, you won't even have to open up this computer. It's you're gonna be able to pull this out. Or maybe it had maybe it had a mesh on it at some point. And then I'm just it's not there anymore. I don't know. That'd be an interesting uh mod to see if you could put a filter in there. An actual seated filter. Have to look up in the manual and see if it uh normally actually had a mesh in there or not because that by itself won't do anything <laughs> except make you feel like you can clean out your laptop all right let's do this you should back up maybe that's a little too high and off we go it's an interesting power button you slide it to the side just goes like this. I'll go ahead and pull up the other stuff. Um, there is my browser. There it is. Just getting it ready so I can add the numbers to it. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's hard to believe this old thing actually runs Windows 10. The messiest hair I can? Oh, I don't want to mess up my hair. Not that it's really that pristine. I didn't do a lot before I uh, turned on the camera. I'm going to set up a little bit, I guess. Mm. No, it's not going to get messy because my ears are going to hold it in place. Could pick this up or something. No, that just smushed my ear. I want to, but I I fear that my ears might uh have a problem if I do. And then I'll have to put on cat ears and just meow every two seconds. Okay, so let's pop open open hardware monitor. Come on. Okay. Oh, hey, it's 11 o'clock already. I bet this hurts. Oh, no, it doesn't. Here, I can't make messy hair, so I'll just do this. Uh, it's really uncomfortable after a while. It feels like someone's pulling my hair. I wonder why. It's really heavy. <sighs> Hurry up, open hardware monitor. Old computer. I, you know, this has just got a platter drive in it. Ooh, I think I'm noticing potentially... Yeah, we've cut a little bit of uh, heat off of our resting. Oh, no, there it goes. No, I think we have. Once we get the CPU load down to zero. Come on. It's doing stuff in the background right now, so I'll give it a second. When it's at zero load, it goes down to 39. I think. That's pretty awesome really efficiently getting rid of uh, the heat. So does that mean that two shims would be even better? Might want to find out. Ow. Ow. Oh, I just lost three. All right, so 
And we're down in the zeros. It looks like it went from 44C resting ambient temperature to 41. So that's actually pretty awesome. I'll update that number. So this might actually be a pretty significant improvement. I'm not going to be able to do that and actually do stuff. You really want me to do a lot on my hair. Ah, I can't get it to... Nope, it's gonna fall. Here, I'll go emo again for you, though. If that's what you want. Okay, now I look completely lame. Uh, okay, so 41C, now let's boot up Prime 95, and see where it goes. I wish I had a better display for everybody to look at, but I haven't set that up yet. I have to move so much crap just to make this work, too. Alright, the fans haven't even kicked on all the way up. Taking it a little while. Get this out of the way here. Unblock our vent ports. Wow. All right, so we're still sitting at 80 degrees at 100%, about one minute in. Okay, I can't do that. It drives me insane. I feel like a complete... Like... I don't know. I just feel like a giant dork with my hair like that. Not, I don't feel like one because I have elf ears, though. That's completely normal. Don't judge me. Alright, now we're getting up to those... Up to those temperatures. Holding fast at 88 right now. Remember the last one was uh, 93? I think we might be leveling out at 88. Probably not though. It's doing a pretty good job at staying right at 88 and 89. If I had a prediction, I'll pro I'd say it'll probably get to 90 at the five minute mark. I know normally you would do much longer tests like 30 minutes or an hour, but that would make a really boring stream and I'd have to sit here and talk the whole time. Should have poured more apple juice. Alright, we're sitting at 90. Slowly climbing up to 90. One course still at 89. Nope, 91. Do I see 91? It's taking a lot longer to get there though, so I'm just, I want to see if it actually helped. Alright, now we're up to 92. Maybe it won't make... That's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Maybe it won't make that much of a difference at the uh, 5 minute mark for maximum. Because it can't get rid of the air fast enough for it to really make a difference. They have that thermal buffer. But when the temperatures are lower, maybe it helps a little bit. It's up at 92. It's going to wind up being the exact same. Yeah, it's going to wind up being 93. <laughs> Boo. I was hoping it would help. Uh, it doesn't look like it will.
Yeah, both cores are now at 93. Steady. Now we get to see if they're going to hit 94 and actually be worse for the... Oh god, they're going to hit, hit, hit 94. Oh wait, they went down a little bit. No? I'm basically reading you guys' numbers. I'm sure this is really riveting. Uh, they just they keep dropping down. That's kind of interesting. No, they're no, they're not both at 94 yet. But they're about to be. They are both at 94. And that's five minutes. So the overall top end was actually worse. But, I know we're going up to 95, but we're past the 5 minute mark, so. I can't really do a ton with my hair right now, because it'll mess up my ears. Oh hey, my hair is tied up in my dress. Ow. This sucks. Ow. One second. Oh, thanks for the follow, Todd Carr Triple O. Are you trying to use your follow to get me to do it? <laughs> I'm gonna try anyway. Ow. Okay, I can't really put it in a ponytail, I don't have a scrunchie on me. There you go. Ooh, I should have conditioned down here a little bit better. My poor ears. Is this what you wanted? Ah! I lost one. Hand down. Oh wait, no I didn't. I thought I lost it. Cool, they stayed. You're supposed to spirit gum them, but I didn't. Alright, so... It looks like the thermal performance on Max is actually a little bit worse. Um, which is a little disappointing. But I think for like average use, like where you're not completely hitting 100% all the time, um, it seems like it's a little bit better. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I know one thing I want to do. I wanted to cover that hole in the bottom and see if it helped or hurt performance. So we got 94 over here. So I'm going to go ahead and list our results. Or C, no throttle. What did you miss, CBF? Okay, so we've got this set up. I'm not even going to restart the machine or do anything like that. I'm going to just let it cool off so I don't have to wait for a reboot. Um, I'm just going to tip it up. What's over here? Let's <laughs> crap out of the way. going to tip it up onto its back and uh, going to cover this little and let you guys see it. There's a little plate with holes in it right here and those don't come factory and I'm going to cover them and see um, going to cover them and see one second I got to get tape. going to see if it changes the thermal characteristics helps or hurts. I'm kind of curious. Alright, we're just going to apply some, uh, some old tape, some duct tape to the bottom. And we'll see if the, um, the uh, pressure system designed by Fujitsu actually uh, 
is better than someone just drilling a hole where the fan is. This one should be fun. Dress is cute. Thank you. I wish I had a more open neck. Could probably get it worked on, but I do really like it. Okay, so let's open open hardware monitor back up. I bet our temps haven't even recovered fully yet though, which kinda sucks. Gonna have to wait for them to come down regardless of what I do. Yeah, they're still at 48C right now. Nah. 46C. It's a heck of a time getting the heat out, huh? We're pretty close to baseline though. I'll just wait it a little bit. Wait it out a little bit. I don't know if I really have anything exciting to show. Check it out, I have a drill motor. I actually bought this one. It was like 10 bucks. Super torquey. I haven't actually done the project I was supposed to with this yet, but I'm super excited to. Need to get a coupling for this. I'm glad that it's keyed and not completely smooth, but uh should probably I'm probably gonna have to buy a coupling. I don't think I'll be able to make something that can handle that kind of torque. Uh, why is it back up? It's at like 46, 47. Or maybe that's just its baseline now that I... I'm gonna shut it off and give it a few minutes of a... Uh, of a... Uh, contemplative rest. Actually, it'll be faster if I leave it open. But... Whew. After this, I don't know what I'm gonna do though. It's only 11.30. I thought this was going to take me a little bit longer than this, but it didn't. Hey, turn off. I don't know. What's everyone who's uh, watching? What do they vote for since I'm probably going to stay up a couple more hours and do something? It'll probably take me 30 minutes to put all this crap back where it was, though, if I stream anything. All right, cool off. Ugh, I should have straightened my hair. It's so frizzy right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up a little bit. Alright, note to self, make sure you use one to one because that was terrible. My hair is made of candy. Wouldn't that be awful? I wouldn't be able to stop eating it. If this was candy, I literally, I would, my hair would stop right here where I can't reach it. And then I'd probably cut it and eat it. I have like the shortest hair and the freaking biggest butt ever. Just to eat candy all the time. I don't know if I want to keep this or not. Oh, it finally did dry. Which makes it super useless. I'll throw it away. All right, I think we're I think we're ready to uh, determine what kind of heat levels we're looking at here. Is this trash? That's trash. I like, I like having all these in it. Easy to 
This thing just feels hot now. All right, I think that the tape actually does kind of hurt it. Just let it sit for a little bit. It's at 43, 44 right now. Which, if you'll recall, with the shim in it, it was at 41 before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna record that. The shim and cover we're gonna be looking at say it'll be nice and use 43c now let's see what happens if we uh if we run our prime 95 and do maximum heat as always Now this is just a lot of waiting and you can't really read the screen, so it's kind of dumb. I think when I make a YouTube video, kind of, because I'm probably going to do something a little more thorough, I'll make an entire video, I'll wind up doing it with this higher end laptop where I can actually do it to the graphics card as well. Temperature climbs pretty slow. It's at 87 right now. Five minutes, it'll be 11.39. It's climbing a lot faster than it was before. I'm gonna check some messages while I'm waiting for this. No, nobody was interested. Alright, we're already at 90, and we got four minutes left, let's see. I don't know what my next tech video is going to be. Depends on what my 3D printer gets here, because I'm definitely going to stream building the 3D printer. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting experience. And we are at 92. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I'll have to be up and moving around more too, which will be... Which will be interesting. Yeah, then we can both make 3D printed stuff. Most of my 3D prints are probably going to be, um... Where's my hand? Are going to be, uh... Upgrades for the printer at first. Because, uh... It's not the greatest printer out of the box, but it has a huge community behind it. Alright, right now we're at 93. Got three more minutes left. Just get over to. So we're almost already up to where the shim was. Let me go ahead and update that. Um. And we are now at 95, so the uh, holes actually do make a difference, <laughs> interestingly. And it doesn't look like they cause a lot of dust either, because there's not a lot of dust inside the chassis. Put my hair upside down. I think my... Uh, I think my... Uh, ears are definitely going to come off if I do that. No. No. Let's see. No, I can't really do it without destroying my, my, uh, ears. Well, uh, Yeah, I can't really do it. It's all stuck behind me. There goes one of my ears. No, oh, it's still on there. Is this what you wanted? 
Did I do good? Oh wow, we're at 97C. I can't see anything. And, um, yeah, it looks like without the tape, it's way better. Uh, yeah, without the, with the holes, the aeration in the bottom, it's so much better. This one wound up stopping at 5 minutes at 98 Celsius. So. Oh, yeah, no throttle either. And drop. And it's going up to 98, but the test is over. I'm kind of curious, actually. Will the temp drop immediately if I pull the tape off? Let's find out. Oh, well, my hair is a complete mess now. It's like Rob Zombie style. Oh, crap. Oh, the temps actually did drop a little bit. It dropped a point. It went back from 99 to 98. Yeah, it went all the way down to 97. So intake holes when everything's kind of tight um, are actually... Thumbs up. Thermal shim? Um, at least with the adhesive that I have, not so great. Here. I need, oops. I need to cut it all off. Okay. It never quite hits throttle though, which is cool. Alright, so the aeration holes actually made probably the biggest difference. So whoever did that, thumbs up to them. Um Let's see, repasting definitely helped on the top end when there was a lot of heat. It dropped at 9C on the top end. The shim helped your lower end, but after that, it actually didn't help because there was more than one transfer medium. After it hardens completely, you might not notice as big of a difference, but I'd say uh, there's probably a little less overall efficiency in adhesive versus just regular paste, because adhesive has to put actual bonding agents in it where paste doesn't really have to. You can just rely on pressure. So that kind of makes sense. There's probably just literally less metal in um, adhesive. And since it's got to go through the adhesive to get to the rest of it, that yeah, makes sense. I'm willing to bet if you welded it on there. Well, no, because welds aren't that great either. You'd have to actually cast it out of copper. Um, so the shim... With the cover, temperatures were overall worse because there was less air. So the uh, person who drilled it out is, I guess, why would they not put holes right there? It works out so well. Oh, I know when you're in the engineering hole, you kind of, I don't know, you can get blinders. A lot of times they're probably trying to design this amazing jet stream system with positive pressure. And all oh, it's gonna cool off the RAM and all that other stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, you just you needed a lot more holes in your uh, in your design. I think that's about all I can do for this. Um, I'd say that if I added another shim, I would probably get even worse performance on the top end because there would be yet another intermediary with poor thermal conductivity compared to regular thermal paste. Um, I don't know if the shims would perform if I didn't use the adhesive. I don't really want to try because I don't consider that a, a particularly like efficient solution because if it gets knocked loose at any point, which it probably won't, but all I gotta do is this the wrong time and it'll fucking flip out of there and go into your, into your uh, 
motherboard and then you'll have a good time. So I don't want to test that one out because it's not really, it's kind of non sequitur to do it that way. Let's see. So I think that's really all I can conclude from what I'm seeing. And I think that's pretty much it for this episode then. Do I have to do any more crazy stuff with my hair before I stop, or... I think I can do any other tech videos right now. Well, I'd have to prepare for them, and take forever. I didn't really do much preparation for this one because I do this kind of junk all the time. Alright. Well, maybe when it hardens I'll go back and test it again and see if maybe the conductivity improves. Overall, I'll probably leave the shim on there just because when it's sitting idle, it'll be less hot. One thing I'm not going to go into today that I want to at some point is undervolting, where you feed your chip the lowest amount of voltage that you can to get the TDP down. Um, because the chip doesn't have to operate necessarily at the voltage that it's at. It can actually operate at, you know, a few... Uh, millivolts lower and you'll get less thermal dissipation and actually that's actually one of the most effective and cheapest ways to reduce your laptop's heat but it's a lot of finagling and a lot of software you gotta test it see if it crashes then bring it down point by point test it for stability it'd be a really boring episode i think episode stream whatever all right this is going in the trash. <sighs> that was fun. I think they'll I think they'll be happy. Because uh, it doesn't throttle anymore immediately. Um, it's not going to be that much better, ultimately. The best way to probably take care of that problem would be to make a new heatsink and add a lot more copper to that heatsink. But I'd have to just start... I don't know. I don't know how I would do it. I think you'd need to make a new one. I wonder what China does. Like, I wonder if you have like a Chinese custom heat sink manufacturer. Not that that laptop is worth it. Getting the shipment here would probably cost more than that laptop. Heat sink USA. Custom cut extruded aluminium heat sinks. What is that noise? SSR heatsink. Cover that. <coughs> Ooh, that cough. Do they breathe in hair? No. I could probably cover my table in hair. That doesn't look good. One sec. I'll figure something out. Let me make sure there's a bunch of crap here. Trash over. Okay, I'm gonna take my ears off so I don't get scared. Oh, I kind of miss them. Okay. See what I can do. Oops. I couldn't really see that, so I don't know if it looked cool or if it looked stupid. Yeah. Well, you know what? I still need to put all the screws back in this thing, so... I can actually hear a lot better. I don't think elves can hear as, as good as people think they can. I don't think that design for that ear was that great. Oh, it looked cool. Cool. I 
at some point I need to test my shotgun mic out too. I got a shotgun mic, which I could just put on the actual camera. I'm gonna have to have this thing right here, which would be pretty cool. I'm just nervous it's not gonna work that well. Also uses batteries. And I need I need to test how long it can run. Now there's already one screw missing, so. So how many am I missing now, knowing that one screw is already missing? One, two, three, four. Oh wait, that's not a missing screw. One, two, okay, I'm missing three screws. Missing two screws. And I'm sure some of them wound up on the floor. Any in the trash? No. All right, so I lost two screws. Let's see if I can find them. Just once, I'd like there to be a stream where I don't wind up underneath the table. I don't see them down here. Oh, there's one. Ah. <sighs> All right, so now I'm just ah, now I'm just missing one. Um, uh, I'm not gonna cry too much if I'm missing one, but. Let's see. Let me make sure I got this all in right. Yeah. At some point, maybe adding more holes to the bottom would actually be efficient. I don't know if I showed it clearly before, but this right here is the added holes. It really actually helped a lot. Um, might even be useful to add more, but keeping it in a tight pattern by hand. I don't have a drill press, so be kind of a pain in the butt. Oh man, I hate that this shirt neck is so tight. I feel like it gets up here to like Steve Jobs level. Mm. All right. Put my knife away. Oh, this guy left me. Looking for the screw. Where did you go? Ah, oh, the floor's all sticky from the champagne. It's gross. All right. I think I'll just be happy and not, not care about that last screw. It was already missing some, so... It's not like I'm gonna like, make money off of this, really, so... Whatever. It runs better. Do one last little test. Sign in. Draw something real quick. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Actually, does it have a drawing app on it? it kind of doesn't look like it does. It's got to have like paint or something, right? Sketchbook, maybe? Give me sketchbook. Autodesk sketchbook. License and service agreement. I reject. What's new? Does it not have a full screen mode? Oh, it does. All right, I want a marker. Let's see if this works. 
Uh, it seems like it's only flat. It's supposed to be uh, pressure sensitive, right? Oh, it is. Nice. No, give me a bigger brush. How do you do... How do I... This is hard. Give me what I want. Sorry, I just want to draw on it for a little bit because this is what this is what they use it for. Okay, that's kind of copacetic. Let's see if I can draw an anime elf really quick here. I'll get get the camera kind of close. I guess I should put that here. All right, here we go. Anime elf. Let's probably put. Oh my god, what am I doing? Ah. Okay, I haven't done this in a very long time. Let's do anime. I know anime. Because I love anime. It's really awkward drawing like this. <laughs> super, super awkward. I don't know how anybody does this. Oh, their eyes are really far apart. Professional. Ooh, that looks terrible. I need to put their eyes closer together. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna make the face bigger. Because it's, it's kind of like... Anime elf eating a donut. Okay. I'll try. Let's try this. I'm gonna draw the eyes kind of a weird... Oh, your dog needs that. Let the dog out. Look into the side apprehensively. This just became an art stream. Art stream. Oh my god, I can't draw. Eyebrows shouldn't look like this. <laughs> it, is that... I cannot draw to save my life. Dun, 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 dun. I feel like there's a shadow right here. No, that's bad. That looks bad. Donut. You're eating the donut. Oh, I'm just drawing some random crap to test out this computer that I just fixed, worked on, whatever. There's a donut. The, is that how it would work? I, I don't know. Big lip. Big upper lip. For eat, donut eating. I guess. I just have to copy my hair. Which means I can cover most of the picture with hair. Uh oh, it's running slow. No, it's not. Never mind. And, uh... Eyelid creases, right? Anime has eyelid creases. And the blush. Because they're embarrassed. This is terrible. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, okay. No, that, that's bad. Can I erase? Oh, it supports a race. That's awesome. You need to buy me one of these. Gonna have to show them my my expert artistry. Cheek, I'll put cheekbones on here. Those aren't really cheekbones. That's the orbital something or another. I don't remember. You can see the little tip of the ear. Yeah. Alright, it looks terrible, but didn't get really hot. 
when I drew it, so but it's probably a good thing, right? Guess I should try and blend like some awful colors into it or something. It's a masterpiece from Donuts. Oh, that was dumb. Uh, can I do start a new one? Let me start a new one. New sketch. Let's say it. No, I mean, but yeah, sure. I'm gonna save it because I made it on stream. Why not? <laughs> Pictures. Save is successful. All right, now let's use a really big blendy brush because I know these are gonna take a lot more. Um, yeah, that's better. Just blend all those layers on top of each other, please, over and over and over again. That's what I want. Black. Give me some black. Oh, when you pick it up, it re... I feel like I'm making some impressive art here. Put some greens in there. <laughs> oh my god. It really does blend. I'm surprised they can blend so quickly. It's a lot faster than I thought it would be. That looks terrible, though. Yeah, it it's 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 handling itself for what it is. I'm impressed. Try to make a person real quick. Let's paint a person. So we want the. I'll paint a face, and it's a lot easier. Aww, they didn't need out there, they were just lonely, that's so cute. Okay. Here's the head. There's the neck that doesn't look right. I don't know how to draw. Um. Okay, I need to add some shading in this area. Head bang like a rocket star. I know you said rock star. Alt. Uh, I don't really want a head bang. I'll get a headache. Okay, I'm done trying to draw people. This has been my attempt at the best art ever. Here, I'll just finish my person real quick. And a May. They're done. Let's name them. Meow. 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 Ow. I got really dizzy really fast. That was mean. Okay. Wow, it's actually pretty cool for what it did. Awesome. I feel bad that I'm stopping this so early. I was planning on going longer. Okay, so this thing's done. Melatonin time. Got it. Ow. Should probably stop stabbing my table. You know, it's kind of fun. Six stabbing. You're gonna go back over here. Install this later. All 
All right, well, I guess that's it for now. This weird. I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching, though. I mean, it's it was pretty boring. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like doing it on stream. This video was sponsored by. Ki no, it wasn't really sponsored by them. I don't take money. Nobody wants to give it to me. Anyway, you can get heat sinks custom extruded. Aluminium ones, anyways. I don't know about copper. Can you even extrude? You can extrude copper, right? I'm curious now. And I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up after this. Can you extrude copper? Copper extruding machine. I guess I guess you can extrude extrude copper then. All right. Yeah, I get it. It's really interesting. So you can. I don't know if you can extrude copper like that though. No, it's a mystery. So, we learned in this lesson that thermal shims are kind of okay, but good thermal paste is probably a better bet. And then uh, drilling holes is also really good, apparently. And that, that's about all I can conclude from that. I will... I don't know if I'll stream tonight. I might go out and get some snacks instead and just chill out. <laughs> Because uh, I'm going to have to wake up, then I can wake up tomorrow and put this all back where it was and and stream video games again. <sighs> or maybe I'll film a couple of other videos for YouTube or something. Anyways, it's been awesome. I really super appreciate that you stuck through it because it was kind of just like a wait for numbers kind of thing. I had fun. Anyways, thanks for watching and... I hope this key press works, because if it doesn't, I'm just going to look like an idiot. Good night.